This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook. We got a special three Jew crew here. We have Josh, the fat Jewish. Is that true? Oh my God, you're getting skinny. I buddy. can show you. I, I am uh, Jewish. If you want me to, yeah, I can prove it. <laughs> and Doc, the reason you can show him that he is the fat Jewish. But anyway, you guys, I've been following actually a long time, far before. Mm -hmm. And when Gary V, who you guys know, yep. told me that I could build an Instagram following when I'm over 50, I'm like, come on. And he actually used YouTube as an example. Because about, we're over 50? No, no, building an audience. Yeah. Like he said, these guys weren't selling anything. These guys are just building an audience and I can't wait till they figure out right. what they want to sell. And you can see Gary doing that with his empathy wines, but extraordinary babe wine, hey. big exit. Cheers. Cheers. Come bunch of juice. Yep. Yay. You are setting the standard for all those parents that are like, you got to go doctor, lawyer, or failure. Yeah. Fuck oh you. Yeah. Look at these two guys. My they parents, make way more than my brother's a doctor and the rabbi. My combined. parents wanted me to be an orthopedist. They're like, <laughs> they got this instead. So, yeah. Much fuck off. Disappointed. Yeah. In your face, Even Dad. Now, there's like, disappointment. I even think. now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, you know, to for the entrepreneurs out there that are trying to build what they call a following, you really have an ambassadorship. When you first started, what was your strategy or philosophy, you know, two Jewish friends getting together to build some content? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's kind of right. We started with content and character. I think that was the most important thing in the beginning. I don't think that we had an idea that like this was gonna be the product. I think we just knew that if you did good content every day in a, in a time that was very different than now and there wasn't as much content, we knew that we could build an audience and then to that audience, we'd be able to eventually serve something that made sense for them. Yeah, it was kind of like, a, like we were just like doing ridiculous shit just to be ridiculous. Like the <laughs> idea was not like, oh, we're building a platform. It's just like, it kind of naturally grew because we were just kind of like do whatever the fuck we wanted to do. Then once it got big enough, we were having conversations with them every day and we were like, wait a minute, like, hold on. I mean, why don't we just like, well, because we were doing brand deals for other brands. Yeah. yeah. We we're like, wait a minute, why don't we just create a product and we'll ask our audience like what they want? Like just be like, what the fuck are you guys doing? What do you want? And because we don't care. It's like not like we're we're not wine guys. Like I don't know if you can like tell. We're not like wine <laughs> dudes. Like they're Jaeger guys. Swirling. Right? Yeah, we're not like yeah. swirling being like, ah, the nutty oaky notes, you know what I mean? Of like soil. But, like, so we were like, what's well, We'll, we'll ask our audience what they want and then we'll just give it to them. And at that time, which was like probably 2015, yeah. overwhelmingly people were like, we're all fucking drinking rosé. And then what we noticed on our own was that none of them knew a single name of any rosé. They're walking into a store and just being like, I got 15 bucks, I'm going to a pool party, give me something pink. And then it was on the guy in the wine store to be like, here's what I'm, so we said, wait a minute, if everyone's drinking rosé and like our crowd is also like kind of lit, Right? They don't yeah. want bottles. They want to like. They want to do keg stands. They want a shotgun. Like they want to like do all the things that you can do with booze and with beer. But they want to do it with wine. Let's put it in a can. Um, so by the time we actually put it out, we already knew that they wanted it. And Doc, you said originally you came out with a book, and you know that's where where I started as well. Yeah. And when you saw, geez, people actually read a book. Imagine what sure. else we could do. Yeah. So the the two characters that we developed initially were a character named Babe Walker, which my brother and I created, and then the fat Jewish was Josh's Twitter. And then we kind of all got together, and we had these two different characters, and we were like, Babe Walker had written a bunch of books. She's not a real person. My brother and I were <laughs> writing these books, and we were getting people like you know a twenty year old girl named Lauren in like Milwaukee to read a book, and there's seven hundred Amazon reviews in the first year saying like this is the first book I've read in five years. We're like, wow, this is powerful. Yeah. People are really into I mean, this stuff. Like, as millennials, like if you can get any, if you get a millennial to read a book, yeah, yeah. like you could basically do fucking anything because yeah. reading is boring and for nerds. <laughs> I hide my money in my books at the office. Uh, that's right. Because I know all the millennials aren't taking it. They're just exactly. safe. Yeah, exactly. yeah, they're totally they're not actually for reading. <laughs> right, so right, right. Yeah. that proved to us that like we could we could really cut through. Yeah, we were, we were selling something that wasn't easy to sell, and the publishing industry was like tanking. Yet our books were on the New York Times bestseller list. That's so we're thinking good. there's something cool here. We're, we have some power here to do this. And at the same time, I think the hardest part of our job at that moment beyond writing the books was that these brands, in order to get paid, like these brands were paying us money, including Anheuser-Busch, Benefit Cosmetics, Craftsman Tool, Apple. And the hardest thing for us was to be able to make an authentic post that was you know, paid for by a sponsor and then still be true to our audience. And we were, it was all icky. We never wanted to like really talk about the things that people were paying us to talk about it, but we had to take the money because we had to pay the bills. So that really, that was the beginning of the, the idea that maybe we should be making our own product outside of books. I mean, for me, it was also like, you know, like taking your, as like a Z-list celebrity, it's like, how long are you gonna be popping for? Yeah, You right. know what I mean? Like how long can like a 
like a fat guy with a dildo on his head really be popping <laughs> yeah. before the brands move on to the next person yeah, that has a large following. Dance, yeah. yeah, so the thing was like, we need to take our window while we while our audience is really engaged. They fucking trust us. And we need to create a product of our own because the brands like the brands have no love. They don't care. And they're paying people with these followings a fraction of like what they should be getting paid um, and getting a tremendous amount. And then the minute they're done with them, they discard them and they move on to the next one. So it, was, it wasn't a sustainable model for us. That's another thing that we're kind of working on, which is like basically helping people that have large followings start their own brands. I think a lot of people that have like big fucking social footprints have ideas and want to start shit. But like, what are you, how do you actually do that? Right? It's a lot easier to just take a check from a brand, hold up a bottle of fucking shampoo or a beer or whatever they're handing you and just be like, 15. boom. Right. And just be like, I like this. That's easy. Starting a brand is is fucking hard. Yeah, it's, and it's like not glamorous, and it's like not cute, and it's and not, it's not fun. for everyone. No, and it's not for everyone. But we're you know starting to like connect with people with large followings and be like, we did it. Here's how you can do it too. Because like the brands don't really care about you. You gotta like you gotta do your own shit. And intertwined in there that I see because that's a huge problem. Is I actually grew my own brand looking like this. Right. But it's difficult to stay organic when people are asking you, hey, you know, I have a, a bed warmer. You know, we'll pay you this money, but you know, where are you going to bring up being a sports guy, a technology guy, an entrepreneur, right. some bed warmer? And the biggest challenge is to be authentic. Because I'm more interested in what you guys have, which is a true, not a following, an ambassadorship. And I would think one of the challenges is you have these brands that want products and learn how to monetize it. Yeah. How can you tell? You know, I'm just intrigued by Selena Gomez can have 160 million followers, but not sell out a movie. And there's other people with 9 million mm -hmm. followers that ever, like they'll swarm the streets like Muhammad Ali with. Yeah. Having a relationship with someone on the internet through Instagram, through another social media platform is very different than being a true follower of that person. And I think that people mistake those two things a lot. And we, we even get it with our brands. Like people might love the brand, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to buy it. And that's okay. So what you have to know is that when you're creating a product, you really need to find your audience. And that audience might not necessarily just be your Instagram followers. There might be another audience out there that's actually better suited for that product. And that's part of, I think, what we try to do as we talk to other celebrities and other entrepreneurs. Being an entrepreneur and trying to build a following is very challenging. We did it the other way around. We built a following so we could become entrepreneurs. And I think that that is probably a, is a huge difference between those two ideas. And I, my suggestion to anybody who's trying to build an audience who has a company, that's really, really hard because you're never going to be authentic. And do you think it's getting harder today? So when I started, everyone said, oh, it's too late. And now people are asking me for advice like you guys. And, yeah. and I believe it's never too late. Right. Right. Because <clears throat> two things you said really early that I agree with, and I keep telling all these crew over here, all we need to make sure is every day we're putting out good content consistently. Yeah. Like <clears throat> Disney. Mickey Mouse Club, the Mickey Mouse Club has 400 million, you know, right. views on YouTube. Yeah. There was no such thing as YouTube when, when uh, you know, Disney came up with it. Sure. But it's just good content sure. consistently right. and he knows his audience. Yeah. Right. Do you think it's too late? I mean, I, I, I think that for a lot of the, a lot of the just influencers who aren't actually putting out content and are basically just like promoting products and like whatever, like that bubble is bound to burst, right? Yeah. Because the fact is that like there's no barrier to entry right anyone can start an instagram account and try Excuse. to become an influencer right yeah so it's like as the number of influencers grows right then the market becomes saturated and the value of each influencer loses value right like they become less and less important because there are an exponential number of them growing out so i think the i think the point i think now the issue is really to not try to become an influencer but to put out good content or to actually to actually start something, to actually build something. So even if you're not going to become a celebrity, you're going to actually build something that's that's real and lasting. Uh, because eventually, this bubble has to burst. Yeah. And then size of size of market keeps growing. So one of the things that you we're all old enough to realize is when you started a business when you were younger, it only had so much reach. And in media, selling you know as a sports guy, when you would have radio, print, and TV. Cable was my favorite because it seemed like every station that tried to pitch Steve Young or Troy Aikman or whatever, like, we have 80 million homes. Mm -hmm. And now today, when I think about anyone like you two, you started off and you weren't really thinking my reach is 4.2 billion homes because it really is, right? Because right. everybody has that digital data. 
What do you guys look at if you're looking towards the future and, and some of these brands that want you to help them? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the KPIs or the indicators to you of like, here's really your reach and it's okay if it's only 10 million people. Right, right, right. To me, it's about conversation, right? Yeah. I think we, we've always thought of it as like actual, like there's so much noise on the internet. If you can cut through it and get someone to say like, I fucking hate these guys. I love these guys. If you're talking about it, if I get you to talk, cause like at this point, millennials, Gen Z, they've been getting served all their life. Like they, people have been marketing to them every day for like the last however long. So the noise is infinite. It becomes like white noise. You almost stop hearing it. So if we can cut through that noise, it's not about like, look, there's all these made up metrics, right? And like that actually- We made been, them up. Right. And that's been hard, <laughs> that's been hard for us as we started a million million dollars worth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, we're on, now we're on the other side, right? Like now we have a massive network of influencers, right? That we use for the brand. And we have these like brand, you know, we have these like influencer agencies coming in and be like, we can get like 42 million BTMs and like 72 billion. And we're like, bitch, we made this shit up. Like we invented the smoke screen. Like you cannot pitch us fake that metrics. That means literally nothing to us. Yes, right. it means nothing to us. We were on the other side of it. We did it. We have one main KPI. There's one metric that like is the metric for us. And that is how many times per post or talking about a product did somebody write at and then somebody else's name. If somebody says, I want you to look at this, that means they felt it and they felt they thought of someone else that they know. Right. And that's the only true infectious right. disease of, of social media that works. That's like in our comments, it's just like at Lauren, like this is so us. Like at, you know, this is fucking Ryan. This is like, so this you. This is fucking Greg. Like, yeah. right. This is if, you. If, You're the worst. If we put something up and it's that, then we know we got, we're on to something. What I do not want to look at is a deck where they're like just giving me some actual fake acronyms with like tremendous numbers of a literal KPI. I can't even believe I'm saying KPI. Yeah. Of a literal fucking metric that yeah. they actually <laughs> made up because yeah. it means nothing. And all these agencies <laughs> and stuff have been coasting on this shit. But really it's about conversation. It's about authenticity. It's about people sharing it with each other. Like give them fire fucking content and let them like let them share it out and do the marketing for you. If they're willing to share it with their friends, it's probably killer. Yeah, and I look for the emotional attachment, right? I was born in the old school if people buy an emotion for logical reasons and I think a lot of the younger people when I watch your stuff, your emotional attachment, like you said, you, and you don't give a shit whether my wife gets pissed off when she sees people say that they you know, don't like it or there's a hate. I'm like, I like that. Yeah. Because I've evoked an emotion. It's the internet. It, yeah. it's, it's beautiful, it's right? I, I don't want them to, just to follow me and watch it. Totally. Uh, I want, my game is inspiration because I think it's an area that most people haven't had enough seasoned experience or situational knowledge to right. actually move somebody. Right. And if you're going to try to inspire someone, people are going to laugh at you, snicker at you, make, which is perfect because they'll keep watching and tell people how dumb you are. Totally. And I'm okay with that. Howard Stern made millions and millions of dollars, if not a billion, off of people thinking he's an idiot. Like I, you know, Okay. Kanye West said it best. He said, everybody's going to say something. I'd be worried if they said nothing. Like, just go off. Like, you, honestly, I respect good trolling. Like, shit on me. Because, like, <laughs> you're thinking about me. You're talking about me. I mean, another metric that we also use that I don't want to overlook is, like, when you have a physical product is actual sales. I think it's interesting when you, like, talk about, um, you know, Selena Gomez or someone, yeah. which is, like, does this shit actually convert? Like, do does do, do people actually go to a movie theater and see her movie? And we, you know, we look at the numbers, like, in terms of, like, how much wine we were selling. We're like, what is the actual, like, are people going to a store? And, like, how do we make them go and actually buy something? And yeah. how does that translate to sales? I think a lot of people ignore that. They're like, get all this noise going. But, like, is are you selling shit? And how can you see the distinction, like, Kylie, right? I mean, because she sells shit. Like, totally. Kylie Jenner can sell. Okay. If I was going to post something and have someone sell for me... What is the difference that in what she's doing compared to Selena Gomez? She's not really, she's, she's not shilling garbage. That's what it is. The truth is that it's all about the product. People love celebrities and they love things that are promoted by celebrities. But if the product's not good, nobody wants it. The Kylie's brands are phenomenal. Kylie yeah. is an incredible Kylie, brand. Also, they like, people feel connected with. Look, we've always had a theory, right? And I mean, I'm not Kylie Jenner, but I think we're comfortable. You look just like her, come on. Right? <laughs> You're I getting agree that. with you. I agree with Maybe you. Maybe Emily. I'm going to get a lot. Bit. I'm going to get a lot more work done. So yeah, okay, eventually, good. I will Hang look like there. Kylie. Um, but I think that people actually feel more connected to like internet like internet and reality show personalities than they do to like traditional celebrities, right? Yeah. Like if you see Brad, Crazy. you see Brad Pitt at a restaurant, you're like, it's like seeing a fucking exotic animal. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> right. Like you actually say less, 
right? But you would when, never go up to Brad Pitt. You would never yeah. go up to Brad Pitt. You're you guys are housewives. Right, exactly. Right? When you see me, you're like, I'm going to go up and fucking, I'll go up and grab this dude's dick. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know him, he knows me. I look at him, but you know why? Because it's a different connection. They feel connected on a different level. Well, most level. of the time they see you is when they're taking a shit. Right, they're literally on the toilet <laughs> so being like, oh, look. Like, no, you don't connect with someone through like watching them on a movie screen. So I think that when it comes time to actually say like, yo, do are we connecting? Do you want to buy something? Do you trust me to buy something? I think people connect with that. I think traditional celebrities feel like shill and like people from the internet or from reality feel like people that they know. Um, and it's a totally different thing. I mean, I'm on the Z list and like Kylie is most certainly like on the A list, but I think that people's connection with her is different than it is with Selena Gomez. Well, yeah, because they like watched her grow up. They really feel like they know her. They watched and her change her entire face and, and yeah, body yeah, yeah, and everything yeah, exactly. about her. Yeah, become yeah, a completely yeah. different Wake up her daughter yeah. with her beautiful yeah. singing voice. Totally. And like, and, and the thing is that like, doesn't matter who she is, her product's amazing. It actually works. Right. Yeah. And that's like, and this is a delicious drink that people actually like to drink and it solved the problem for those people. But because of your illumination and humility from the very start, yeah. people start to trust what you say because if you're willing to say, you know, like, this is the truth and this is who I am and this is what it, the interesting thing to me and you look at Barstool just getting bought by Penn Gaming for 400 million and you guys are 100 million dollars. It's really interesting coming from a corporate background, you know, I followed the whole doctor lawyer failure. I had to go to law school and be in the Silicon Valley and venture capital. Wow. And I'm just amazed. It, it all changed to me when some dude in a suit came into my office talking about marijuana and like, you know, venture fun to sure. buy dope. Yeah. And I'm like, this world is freaking changing. And then you got Barstool and you guys, where, where do you see, you know, on the other side, this political correctness where, you know, you have hats that are saying, you know, like Super Bowl bitch and all this stuff. When I was young, Anheuser Busch <laughs> was edgy because you know they did dumb, you know, taste great, less filling for Miller Lite or whatever. Yeah. Here we have a whole nother ball game. Where and when do you think that that socialization, you know, really hits the corporate world and not just making you guys outliers and say, oh, you know, the last for forgiveness. We didn't really approve that. Just like Barstool gets away with other stuff. It's a great question. I think we're navigating those waters like as we speak. I was still worth the money to navigate, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, good, absolutely. good. I want to make sure you guys are real entrepreneurs. Yeah, no, it's right. No, we're, uh, good. we're good. We're good. Um, I think that the truth is that we had a bunch of suitors when we were when this started getting really successful, and some other people were interested in buying this brand or investing in this brand. They took themselves a little too seriously, and we were like, we've loved AB since we were kids. Um, and to be honest, like some of the AB marketing from like the 80s and 90s was so phenomenal that I think it pushed us over to think like they're the brand for us. Like they're the brand we want to sort of shepherd us into the next chapter of this brand's life because they know what it's like to like build a brand that can be cool, it can be a little bit irreverent and a little bit outside the box. And I'd say so far, they've kind of let us do our thing. Yeah. I mean, we're in a million dollar bus right now that they let us build that's going to travel mean, around the country. It's a problem that I navigated for years, which is like even when, even before this brand, when we were doing brand deals, like every brand wants to seem like they're down for whatever, you know, like Burger King or whoever would come to me and be like, we want you to do whatever you want. Like our CEO is 11 years old. We don't give a shit. Like we're disrupted, <laughs> like a bunch of buzzwords. And then like, we'll pitch them like two things. Yeah. And, and they're, they're like, like they're no, like, not they're like law legal's freaking out. Like you actually could do anything you want to do. <laughs> and I'm like, you guys don't actually want to do something cool. So I think yeah. when we were like looking to partner with somebody, it was like, who's actually going to say that they want to get crazy and want to do like take chances and try new things and talk, you know, like, and, and actually follow through on it. And when it really came down to it, like Anheuser-Busch really was like fucking down. Like even in the landscape of back in the day, like they've always been risk takers. Um, and they have like, they told us they'd let us do whatever whatever we want and they have let us do whatever we want. Yeah, so like- Yeah, and we, and we dated before we got married. I mean, we yeah. sold them a piece of the company first and we spent a year plus kind of getting to know each other and they got to really see like how we do things. We saw how they do things. And I mean, I intentionally pitched them shit that was not okay for anybody. And they were like, great. And I was like, hmm, like, no, like down. That. Yeah, I like that. You know, <laughs> just to see, like, were they really down? Because everyone likes to seem like they're crazy and irreverent and nuts and disruptive or there's whatever, but they're not. Th and there's yeah. definitely been times where they've said stuff like, hey, like, we get it and we see why you want to do this, but like, here's the issue with that in a way maybe we didn't look at it. And we're like, actually, you're right. This is maybe not tasteful or probably. Yeah. Oh, this is too far. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually pushed too far. <laughs> 
and 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 because they don't do it every day, we've respected those times that we get it. We won't do this one right. yeah. because we don't want to know what those things were. Right. But so yeah. far, like they, they trust our creative vision. They like if the line gets crossed, but like they've re- like they say something. But for the most part, like they know that our audience trusts us. They know that we know what we're doing, and that like going over the top and taking chances is a fucking. This is a new world. Yeah. Guys in suits are pitching dope, and like honestly, yeah. it's too, there used to be, like thirty years ago there were like thirty jobs. You were like a doctor or a lawyer or like a or garbage failure. man or like a fucking you know. <laughs> Yeah. But like now, honestly, like now you can if you can build if you can build an audience and you can connect with people, you could build a, a CBD like monocle company, like anything, literally make it up. That's you right. know what I'm saying? You could build a you could be a, a CBD monocle company for dogs. That doesn't even make sense, but it could be a thing. <laughs> Everyone's it's gonna be a thing now. It's gonna be a thing. <laughs> That's like you know what I'm saying. It's from God. So it's like anything can happen. Um, and like you know the I think the corporate world and the dinosaurs are like slowly starting to catch up, and like AB yeah. is definitely out in front of them. To in align with that, you know, last question, the entrepreneur is changing. And I love this last question for advice, not just for all the entrepreneurs, yeah. but my own kids. When I meet people that I want my kids to look up to, I, like I have these hyper academic parent wet dreams, you know, siblings, five of them that all went to the Ivy Leagues, doctor, rabbi, you, you guys know them, right. went to Hebrew school with them probably. Oh, for um, sure. But I'd rather my kids, I have a nine-year-old son and three teenage daughters, watch you guys. So the question I'd like you to answer specifically for that audience is, what's the best piece of life advice? Forget business, just I love what you guys are about. I know why you're successful. I know why you'll continually be successful and happy, right? What advice, you know, you're sitting down with my nine-year-old son and he's looking at you going, Dad, why am I with another Z-lister like you? Uh, you right. know, but what advice would you give him? I have two kids. You have a nine-year-old. Yeah, I have nice. a nine-year-old and I have a seven-year-old. I hope they're not. watching. Yeah. I do not. <laughs> yeah. Nobody not wants that. You know no one right? wants that. Yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody needs that. No right one now. needs that. Yeah. But it's funny because I think about these things all the time and you know, they look at me at work and like what we built and like this is my partner and Tanner, who's the other co-founder, is my, is my brother. Like this is our family business. Uncle Tanner. Yeah. Uncle Tanner. <laughs> and um, the, the reality is that What's interesting is they, they've already gleaned probably the most important thing. My son said the other day, my, my daughter said the following. She said, hey, like, do you love wine? And I was like, you know, honestly, like, I like wine, but I don't love it. And she's like, I don't understand. Why, why would you make a company that sold something that you didn't totally love? And my son, without s- skipping a beat, goes, no, you don't understand. Dad made a wine company because a lot of people like wine not because he likes wine. And if you want to make a bunch of money, nice. you want to make something that a lot of people want, not what you want. Does actually happen, or are you, no. making your <laughs> son, are you making your son sound much <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I Look, Hal, Hal, you're I super, that all the time. Hal is super smart, you. but like, I'm, this I'm, is, seems no, over the line. Dead He's not that smart. <laughs> no, no, I'm, really? I'm, I'm telling you, this is the most truthful thing I've said in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> You've, You've ever said. No, no, no. Dude, maybe. I love your kids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can hang out with Miles anytime. He's a monster. I've created a monster. He was like, I'd be worried I get what that. you're doing. I see you, Dad. You don't even like wine. That that's trying so to, smart. That's yeah. so, I like, didn't know what my hands were when I was seven. I had <laughs> yeah. no clue. Like, Josh what? is over here going, I don't need to say anything. I'm just going to take his son's advice. Yeah, yes. honestly. I never exactly. thought of that. But that is the message. Hire him at the company. <laughs> the message is like every, every, every millennial. Forget every, Tanner, every, have your son. <laughs> every Gen Z is, like, is out there thinking like, what am I passionate about? Like, what's going to be my like CBD mustard or whatever it is? Everything CBD now. So. Next product, we got two um, on here. So CBD far. tampons. CBD tampon mustard. Yeah, yeah. Well, mustard uh, tampons. Whatever. I don't know. It's like want. a name. It's a generator. You just pick words. You can start a. Start exactly. A- but the truth is, like, don't. We're not passionate. I mean, we love wine. Wine's great. Wine's a great thing. It's fun. It's a fun time. Yeah, wine's But sick. like, we're not. As you said, we're not wine guys. Do something that you're, uh, we're passionate about solving a problem for somebody else. Nice. And I think the best entrepreneurs don't get focused on one thing and like, I love this product category. And, and don't get me wrong, amazing companies have been built by people who are passionate about one focused thing, like a myopic, like laser focus on something. But that's, I, don't, I think the greatest entrepreneurs who are serial entrepreneurs who go on to the next thing, they're passionate about solving a problem and figuring out something that's like a bunch of people, it's gonna fix an issue for them. And monetize it. Exactly. Which is why I like your son. Yes. Right. It's all I, about think, I think mine is really that like not that like not okay. I'm drunk. You've ruined yeah, you're drunk. This is what right. <laughs> five sips of babe, mm-hmm. you're drunk. Mm-hmm. Um I think mine is is that I think that people like there's two things. One is that the internet is like a big giant liar, right? And that like I'm old 
and I sometimes get caught up in the like optics of the internet and I'm like wait a minute is are these people happy is everybody happy like is everyone killing it is everyone living their best life so like I can only imagine if you're like 12 like how much you would be fooled and be like you know what I'm saying so I think one is like don't believe the internet right like everything takes hard work like all you see for me is the final image right that distilled final image of me pouring rosé all over myself in a kiddie pool but what you didn't see is like me at like a 7 a.m. meeting in Phoenix like trying to teach some distributors how to sell wine on the internet like, like horrible shit like how the sausage actually gets made so like doing actual real things even though like we all have the internet now we have social media and all these new tools it's just as fucking hard as it ever was to start a business it is really really fucking difficult it's gonna be painful you're gonna absolutely hate it do not be fooled by the fucking me at the end when we finally finish being like ah because it took like seven hours to get that and shot think that, like, that's and, all. Right, <laughs> and think that that's the final image the second like that that's the whole process you just go from a to that a to rich and then two i think is like that if you want like I think that like if we all become influencers, right, and we all start CBD like mustard companies, who mustard is, tampon companies, mustard tampon companies, yeah. who monocle dog monocle mustard tampon CBD companies, <laughs> who is going to do normal stuff? You know what I'm saying? And that like that's the stuff that really needs to like get done. Like if we're all influencers, like who is actually going to like fix things or build things? Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that you need to get focused on the fact that like yes, like someone you see on the internet, you look at a guy like me, and you're like this moron started a brand but guess what like what you do is actually a lot more important than what i do if you like build stuff or fix stuff or like whatever it is Heal like stuff. we otherwise like nothing is going to happen in the world if we're all influencers right. we're going to be totally <laughs> fucked like totally <laughs> fucked so there's like no shame in that like if you're not an entrepreneur and everybody and you think everybody else is it doesn't have to be that way we need construction worker um like people that are on instagram we have like construction worker i'm like a moron with like anal no, it beads would be on. sick if we got like really hot dudes and girls yeah. who were construction workers yeah and made them influencers there needs as to be, a public service that's what i'm saying there need to be more construction worker influencers totally and because, like busboy influencers because if everyone tries to become a fucking muppet in real tree overalls with anal beads on their heads then like no one's gonna know how to build a building because i don't know how to do shit <laughs> so like we can't all do this and that's totally okay but i do think you make you make a really good point though i think your point is the most important point this was hard like we built this company over the past, it took 12 years to build this company. We Overnight st- success. We, we launched right. the, we launched the yeah. wine four years ago, four and a half years ago now, but like we built the audience for the wine company for the seven years preceding that. And so that was, it was horrible. It was, it was like, it was amazing and beautiful and wonderful, but it was so was it? hard. Yes, it was. Yes. Okay, yes. And, but, but then when we launched the wine company, Every day was a slog. Like it was like we were literally on a plane every day, like flying around, like meeting these people, trying to get people to talk about this. And then it just hit. So great, it worked out. And sometimes it doesn't, but we had to work really hard. So the internet like is a lie. It's a lie. The internet is a liar. Yeah. And like the no matrix. one is seeing like yeah. how the sausage it's, gets it's, made. It, the matrix was like we're in a simulation, but like it's kind of true. Like yeah. we're looking at something that's not real. Like nothing you see on the internet is right. the truth. But also, if you have a like, yeah, totally. Like your ex is your ex is like not Miserable. happy. Yeah, Everything's yeah. not true except for his nine-year-old being a baby genius. That, no, that like, was true. No, he's, seriously, he's seven. Dude, seven, dude, dude is seven. He's got a he's got a beautiful. Can he mind. send his resume to me? Yeah, I honestly, he's a killer. That's like awesome. honestly, hire like hire that kid immediately. This is a hall yeah. of fame. I knew when you get the three G crew together that this was going to be amazing. It was better than I anticipated. You Thanks guys for are hanging out. Real deal. I look forward to seeing do we more do the, great shit. We do the you. lap dance on camera or I do it after? Whatever you want to do, man. Okay, we'll do I'm it ready. after. His wife's here, so. Yeah, his wife's right. here. Well, It'll be the best yeah. 30 seconds of my life. <laughs> yeah. Dave Meltzer. Oh my gosh. With Doc and Josh, the fat Jewish. Dave Meltzer, the middle aged mutant turtle, here with Entrepreneur, the playbook.